Hello everyone and welcome to After Hours Gaming League 2015 season. This is week two and we have a great match in store for you today. Should be a very competitive matchup here. Uh, on the blue side we are going to have uh, Epic DOS. Of course Epic Games uh, makes a lot of really awesome games like Unreal Tournament, Gears of War, stuff like that. Great company. They are going to be playing for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, one of my personal favorite charities out there. Um, what they do is they send doctors to uh, war-torn regions of the world uh, and a lot of developing countries that are facing uh, disease outbreaks that they don't have the infrastructure in place to handle. Uh, and they put those doctors sort of in harm's way where other doctors wouldn't be willing to go uh, to actually bring care to the people who really critically need it around the world. So great charity there. Um, and on the red side we are going to have uh, Planter Technologies Prime. Uh, they will be, uh, they're of course a uh, planter technologies, uh, data management and uh, data security company. They're going to be playing for Child's Play. Um, last time we we're going to have Child's Play surprising for the, <laughs> for the uh, rest of the day here, uh, for my cast at least. Uh, but what Child's Play is, is uh, their charity uh, that brings children who are in uh, the hospital or uh, domestic violence shelters. Uh, they get in touch with those kids and try and bring them uh, access to gaming. Uh, gaming, uh, for us even, uh, is something that helps us sort of reconnect with that spark of our youth um, and that enjoyment in life and give us some uh, time to de-stress and uh, get back in touch with everything and reset. Uh, and these children are, you know, children that really need that. <laughs> children that could use a uh, chance to reset and move beyond whatever trauma they've gone through to be put in that sort of position. So great social charity there. Um, but without further ado, let's hop right into the picks and bans here. Um, when we saw the bans coming out, uh, we did see a uh, pause uh, initially after uh, the Olaf ban uh, from the red side. Uh, so there was a uh, pause and a lot of consideration there. Um, a ban that was not expected, it didn't seem, uh, from this blue team of uh, Epic DOS. It seems like that Olaf was probably a pocket pick they were expecting to break out uh, and not have uh, the red side prepared for, but they had done their research and uh, probably saw that Olaf, uh, a lot of practice games were probably going into that, um, or possibly even as a jungler, um, given uh, Olaf's flexibility there uh, and his uh, sustain inside the new jungle would actually be really strong. So. Uh, a banning that out uh, might have thrown a bit of a wrench in the composition the blue side was looking for. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's the uh, benefits to scouting your opponents. <laughs> so, kudos uh, to this planter team uh, for doing that. So, uh, how the aside from that, pretty standard bands. The cannon is a bit unusual. Uh, I think he's still a really strong band, though he's not seen very often anymore. Um, he still has quite a lot of potential, especially uh, for the team pipe potential when he uh, can ult in in Zonias and get a lot of AOD, AOE damage down. Um, so definitely a, a good pickup there, especially if you're going to have a team that's uh, as squishy as this. I mean, uh, you have Morgana, Graves, LeBlanc, Kale, um, a Kennen, if they had this composition in mind, uh, would be really strong against that because... You know, I mean, if he can get in uh, into the back line with that uh, speed buff uh, and just run in there and start damaging all of that squishy back line, I mean, Kale can only ult one person to save them. <laughs> you know, so if he can, uh, if he could have forced an engagement, especially before LeBlanc could find a good pick opportunity uh, to blow somebody up, that could have been devastating. So I think that was a really solid uh, ban there from the can or from the red side of Cannon and. With the way uh, the teams have shaken out, um, the main strategy, it seems, for the blue side uh, is going to be um, using those uh, Nidalee Spears uh, to get a mark on somebody good. And as soon as that mark uh, lands on a really good target, we're going to probably see Nidalee um, go into her cougar form and pounce and try and assassinate somebody. Um, and preferably... Uh, that will be somebody who's around a lot of people. So when Nidalee pounces in, uh, Oriana can put the ball on her and uh, then get a good, really uh, uh, strong ultimate on multiple people, hopefully. Um, similarly, of course, everybody knows how strong of a ball delivery system Vi can be. Um, so Vi, with her ultimate, with her Q, uh, going to be able to 
uh, bring a lot of CC and start off engagements really strongly. Um, even if they do get behind, again, with the Nidalee Spears and the Nidalee Traps to mark somebody, uh, you're going to be still probably seeing uh, the blue side be the team that uh, gets the engagement going when they really want to. Um, though, of course, as we look at the red side, they do certainly have a lot of pick potential, uh, dis just completely disregarding LeBlanc, who makes the pick happen. <laughs> Setting up for that, uh, we see Kale, who does have her uh, Q that actually slows for a significant uh, amount, and particularly to synergize with that, uh, her heal also gives a speed buff. So when we see people like Nautilus, when we see people like Morgana, that have uh, skill shots that are fairly tricky to land, um, they are going to need uh, some sort of assistance with that, either in zoning uh, to set up a good angle for them, uh, which could leave somebody vulnerable to a pick from the other side, uh, even though this team isn't necessarily the most uh, pick-oriented team on the blue side. Um, aside from perhaps the Vive, she went a little bit more damage route. Uh, they don't have too much pick potential there, but there's still the chance of being caught out, and that's definitely not something the Red Side wants. So uh, we're going to be looking to see uh, Kale's heal not necessarily used as much to heal and more used for that passive speed buff so Nautilus can find a good chance to uh, land a hook onto somebody. Uh, Morgana can get in position to get a really good dark binding. Um, or once an engagement starts even, perhaps heal Morgana so she can run in as quickly as possible and then start her her ultimate and then Zonia's uh, before she's blown up so her ultimate can get the most value out of that. Um, overall, uh, we do see some vulnerability uh, on this red team just to sort of outright damage. Both teams are fairly squishy depending on how this Nidalee builds. A lot of Nidalees nowadays uh, have been going pretty much glass cannon, uh, seeing once again, how much AP damage those <laughs> spears do bring. Um, the good old-fashioned uh, Nidalee spears have come back in flavor. Um, but uh, the uh, red side team uh, doesn't have much uh, tankiness themselves really at all. Um, you're going to see Graves and LeBlanc go absolute glass cannon. Morgana might have some resistances if she goes a more utility build with the LeBlanc and the Kale, you're probably going to have all the uh, magic damage you want um, from the red side already. So aside from perhaps the Zonias, because what Morgana wouldn't build Zonias, um, she's probably going to go a far more utility-oriented build. So perhaps uh, something more like a Locket of the Iron Solari. Um, just, you know, general support items. Uh, I'm not going to specifically go through and just list support items for you. <laughs> but... Um, we do see an interesting pickup here initially from the Kale. Going to actually start with a pink ward, um, perhaps to try and get some visibility in this tri bush to make sure she's um, extra safe against uh, any possible uh, shenanigans uh, in the lane here to start. She will be recalling perhaps to pick up an extra pot, I believe. Yeah, she's going to get that extra gold to get that extra health pot. Very uh, good restart, or er, re rebase there to start. Um, but yeah, again, so uh, Nautilus is going to be the main tank, and the question is largely going to be two things. Will Kale be able to ult the right target to block as much damage as possible? Because remember, she's got to use that ultimate to block damage, not necessarily to save somebody uh, like you would expect from uh, someone like a zillion to do. She's got to really get some money uh, ultimates to uh, block a lot of the incoming damage from the blue side. And more particularly... Will Nautilus be able uh, to make himself a juicy enough target to actually be targeted and soak up a lot of that damage initially uh, for the rest of his team so they can survive and actually put out that damage that they have uh, as a potential uh, within their kits. So with all those questions in mind, uh, we do see fairly standard starts here. There was no invade. Line of scrimmage was uh, done pretty solidly. We do have... Uh, Nautilus and Vi both starting on the bottom side here. Uh, Q uh, missed from uh, Morgana. Going to take quite a bit of damage there um, after missing that binding. So um, Kaylin wailing away on her, um, taking her quite a little, but she will munch through those biscuits. Everybody's still got a lot of healing down there, so uh, we'll see what's going on. I do. Morgana does seem to be a girl after my own heart there with uh, the relentless uh, use of that pool to proc that spell thief's. <laughs> as much as possible so 
good play there, getting as much gold uh, out of that item as uh, she can. And it looks like the blue side is trying to push that lane a little bit um, in the bottom lane, as we see Nidalee doing her best to farm out up here. Gonna get a uh, mark onto that Kale. Uh, so she will get some damage, but Kale's gonna heal right on back up. Um, especially with the uh, charge of uh, that flask that Kale picked up as a first item. Uh, looks like Kale's gonna be able to sustain uh, quite solidly through that lane, and that uh, might be further explanation for why uh, the pink wards start, uh, because Kale was looking to start with a uh, flask, and pink wards are typically a pretty good buy with that flask. Um, Noodley's probably gonna be laying down quite a bit of harass onto Kale because at least early on, Kale, like she has her uh, E turned on right now, um, and even still took a spear to the face. Um, Kale's not able to uh, farm uh, with that E all the time uh, during the early part of the game, so she's going to be taking quite a bit of auto damage. Good uh, use of the range there, staying just in range to proc uh, the stun aspect of that chain there from LeBlanc in the mid lane. Yeah, so Kale definitely starting the flask uh, for that extra healing, uh, even on top of her built-in heal that she does have, um, to make sure that she can sustain through this lane with Nidalee, uh, which should be a fairly tough lane here for her. By looking to make something mid, but LeBlanc playing pretty carefully uh, around there. Oh, Vi's going to be coming in anyway. With that Vault Breaker charged up, not going to be able to reach LeBlanc, though. LeBlanc really desperately doesn't want to burn that mana uh, or that cooldown just running away over the wall. So she will just walk around here, but that will cost her a caster or a cannon minion uh, for that. So, uh, decisions, decisions. Um, good damage going to be coming on to the Janna here. Some nice return damage coming out from the Caitlyn, but Janna not able to get her shield up to block a lot of that damage. Going to be taken fairly low again. Uh, munching through those biscuits as much as she can right here, but uh, starting to get low for both sides on the uh, healing that they have. And with Graves already burning, uh, having burned through his health pot, uh, and that damage coming in uh, from the... Or the damage being blocked, sorry I'm paying attention to this Nautilus quite a bit. Uh, the damage being blocked uh, from that shield that Janet can throw down as a form of... Uh, inferred sustain I guess you could say um, it looks like there will probably be um, an out sustain match in favor of the red side here in this bottom lane and LeBlanc actually did just have her passive proc here in the mid lane so that will be with uh, with the wave fairly pushed so LeBlanc looking to go B and by looking to make something happen here luckily LeBlanc did ward that out just before that happened as the engagement happens bot lane that shield did soak up quite a bit of that damage by uh, Smite of the Razor Beaks there, so she is going to be able to clear out that ward and be ready for a repeat gank here. But the Nautilus coming up mid to try and uh, prevent anything from going down. Fabulous Q from Morgana there to land, uh, thread the needle there, pass some minions, and still hit the AD carry there. Great play there. Blanc doing a little auto wrath, trying to fend that Vi away. Um, but Nautilus looking to make something in the bottom lane, and he is not going to be spotted. There is no ward coverage. He did just walk right past that trap, so the flash from the Morgana actually going to miss the Q this time. And it looks like they will be focusing onto that Janna, but the Caitlyn heal is going to be too much. And Vi coming here for the counter gank now. She is actually focusing all her damage onto this Nautilus, though, which is not the target she wants to focus. That slow and knockup from the Janna, not going to be enough. Unfortunately, the Caitlyn getting a little minion blocked there. Not going to be able to follow up with the damage, and LeBlanc actually dodging quite a bit of damage with that uh, Oriana ball. The minion damage from standing in that minion line just going to be too much. That will be first blood onto a LeBlanc. Certainly not something you want to see here, and she did manage to stay in lane with only that Doran's ring, so she will have quite a nice item break, I imagine, going back here. Yes, that will be a fabulous item break for her. Going to be able to come in and start... Uh, bringing a lot of damage potential. Wow, actually going to go triple Dorans? No, she is going to only go double Dorans for a little extra regen here uh, with the Codex to get that cooldown, I imagine, on top of the AP and a little bit more mobility from the boots. So actually, not too insane of a start here from that uh, LeBlanc. Going to go a bit more cautious route, try and invest in a little bit more uh, early value 
Uh, we do see the ping out onto this Nautilus as this is warded, so they will know where this jungler is if they want to try and make something happen right now. They they will actually see Nautilus going B. That's quite a lot of good information. Vi's gonna actually try and interrupt it. She does, and the Oriana gonna cue or gonna uh, shield the Vi right after she cues in and get the ultimate down to kill that Nautilus. And just like that, all of a sudden this mid lane might be even again. Um, with that uh, uh, back already uh, resulting in some items for the LeBlanc, still should be largely favored in her, as we do see the amount of damage potential this LeBlanc does have. Going to be quite threatening in that mid lane uh, until Oriana can actually go B and cash in on that gold she got from the kill onto that Nautilus in his jungle there. And also, you got to start to worry about the sort of mind games that plays with uh, a Nautilus jungle. He's just trying to farm up as quickly as he can to get himself at a point where he can uh, be a lot uh, stronger of a tank, a front line for his team that really does need him. Uh, but even farming up his own jungle, he's not safe. He's uh, getting harassed and actually getting killed uh, with such a secure, uh, such a no hesitation decision as we see the blue handed off to LeBlanc here um, of throwing an ultimate down to know uh, that this isn't going to be something they're going to miss uh, even though he was backing safely within his own jungle so gonna be playing a little bit of mind games that we're gonna hopefully I mean he's got some better more mental, mental fortitude <laughs> than that but we will see um, if that's gonna put him on tilt a little bit here and change some of that decision making as he's going in Looking to get that ultimate onto Oriana, not going to be able to do it. Oriana uh, did have to flash out of that, though, so that will be the summoner down for his ultimate. Good exchange over the all there, except for the fact that uh, Nautilus did have to ultimate in to get that. Graves' ultimate is down here, got them both quite low, but not going to be enough to finish off any kills in that bottom lane. Uh, Kale hitting a point where she can actually harass very strongly now with that QE combo. And LeBlanc desperately looking to pick up some kills here, but doesn't seem like she's going to be able to despite that heavy roam in the bottom lane. They are going to be some dirty, do some dirty farming in between these turrets though to get those minions nice and pushed up into this lane. Uh, with that ward, the minions did even walk around further. So that's going to be a lot of damage coming into this turret in the bottom lane. I'm not sure if they'll be able to get it this early as Graves. Well, he does have a BF sword that might be enough, and with the threat of this LeBlanc, Jan has got to not be here right now. But alas, she is, and that will be a kill going on to LeBlanc. Janna, poor Janna, just trying to do what she could to defend this turret, but actually going to go down and pay uh, for it with her life. LeBlanc taking a turret shot there is going to have her passive proc'd, uh, but that will be a safe back with a lot of damage onto that turret. But more importantly, that second kill on to LeBlanc going to accelerate her build a little bit more as we do see a lot of damage coming into this uh, mid lane turret and Italy trying to uh, make something happen in the top lane as well. It's still fairly early though so it looks like neither of these teams is going to maybe mid lane actually might be able to get this turret but Kale probably going to be enough to force them away. No actually just going to put in a lot of damage onto that Vi who's going to be forced to vault breaker away. Um, so that will not be any turrets traded but a lot of damage on the turrets traded for that kill on the bottom lane so possibly um, an easy kill onto this now low turret in the mid lane to set up a dragon take here uh, later but LeBlanc getting a little bloodthirsty looking for that kill onto Janna but Vi ready for it gonna actually ult in uh, and the ultimate from Kaylin as well Kaylin putting in quite a bit of damage actually pa proccing the passive from LeBlanc there so LeBlanc is going to be forced to go back, but I'm not sure if this is necessarily a time when they want to try a dragon. It's still fairly early. Graves really wants to get that pink ward, but ooh, fabulous binding from the Morgana there. And Graves going to be able to put in quite a bit of damage even despite the uh, uh, the shield from Janna uh, on Vi there. And LeBlanc putting in quite a bit of damage. She did decide to go Morella Namicon first. Uh, instead of going for that death gra death fire grass pill, she's looking for a little bit more of a safe route uh, just to secure uh, that early lead, invest in a nice item break here. And with uh, the regen of the Morella Nomicon and the Double Dorms rig, that should be enough regen for LeBlanc uh, to always be ready to go insane uh, and blow a combo whenever she has her cooldowns up uh, as we go further into the game. And they finally will be clearing out that pink ward in the tri-bush. 
uh, for this bottom lane red side here. As we see uh, that ward being swept back out. So a little dangerous ward coverage here in the bottom lane. Blue side going to be playing a little cautiously here. Uh, as they are not sure if that Nautilus is hanging around. Um, they will see him as he comes out uh, into the river here though. As LeBlanc goes in, actually taking quite a bit of damage. Getting a little bit too close to that Oriana who's able to just W with the ball on top of her head. Uh, Nautilus is going to clear out that ward and head to the bottom lane. They do ping out uh, that this tri-bush is not warded. So if Janna or Kate try and ward this up, they are going to be able to spot out that Nautilus who's throwing down a pink ward to ensure that it is in fact not warded. LeBlanc trying to establish some vision control so she can land a pick and it looks like she will be forced away with the Vi there threatening to vault break her face. Um, and that will be actually killing the bottom lane. Let's actually do a quick jump back here to see what was going on there as we were distracted by uh, the LeBlanc threat. It uh, looks like that turret did go down despite the Janus shield and with Nautilus there uh, the last shot onto that turret gonna be enough. And then Janna going to get locked down by this binding here. Yes, Morgana tanking up the turret shots like a pro there. Oh, she does miss the final Q though. Um, and that will be her getting away though despite the Vi being there. She actually will get away. And LeBlanc gonna blow up Vi. Yes, the final Q gonna be enough to finish off that Vi. And that's that roaming assassination potential. If you, as an Oriana, stay in that mid lane and try and take this turret, which is low, they will get that turret down. Uh, but LeBlanc going to come here and look to blow up Oriana as well. Probably not going to be able to. Oh, actually going to dodge out of the ultimate there. So that will be a significant cooldown for the Oriana, uh, but that will save her her life. So definitely uh, worth it in the end if it prevents another kill onto this LeBlanc, who is right now 3-0 and and with that blue buff. Uh, it's going to be quite scary presence right now. We'll be able to start to, even without that Deathfire Grasp, uh, assassinate anyone she comes into contact with. So no dragons yet at this point in the game, though we do start to see that vision battle starting to break out. Um, with the uh, outer turret in the bottom lane down, but the mid turret, uh, out, the outer turret in the mid lane down, uh, for alternate teams, the actual uh, Dragon Pit itself does have equal control uh, to both sides aside from this ward coverage. So we're going to start to see a lot of battles come out over these wards here um, as we're seeing right now. And there actually has been a pause here. Not sure where the problem is. Possibly some connection issues uh, with one of the teams. So uh, let's take a moment during this breather here to actually analyze some of the builds right now. We do see... Uh, that Infinity Edge already completed on this Graves, uh, whereas uh, Caitlyn just has the recipe for it. Yeah, it looks like there were some connection problems with the Kale. Uh, so Kale gonna be uh, trying to reconnect here, uh, clear up whatever connection issues she had, so hopefully uh, she can get going in this game. Uh, looks like it hasn't cost her too much, she's only a little bit behind in that farm compared to Nidalee, so... Uh, as we log or as we resume this play here, hopefully everything's all right with her now. And she is actually going to dodge the spear there. Very good dodge from the Kale, uh, who is going to be able to clear out these minions with that E. The AOE damage from that is quite strong. Um, Nidalee going to think better of going in on that uh, as the blue is handed off here. But yeah, we do see um, Caitlyn only has the recipe items for that Infinity Edge. She does not have it completed, so. If they do force a confrontation uh, in this Dragon Pit, there will be an advantage from the 80 carries and also uh, an extra codex is completed uh, for the LeBlanc over uh, the Oriana that just has her Athenes and Boots done. Um, so this team fight should it break out, should be favored. That's actually going to be a pretty decent trade. Now Oriana going to miss the ball though, and that will be the follow-up damage. No, Graves Old does miss LeBlanc, very bloodthirsty, going to pay for it. Well, Oriana punishing that LeBlanc with an ultimate under turret. LeBlanc knew that if she could get that pick, that was probably going to be the dragon. But she got a little greedy there, going a little too ham under the turret. They will spot out this blue team coming in, but the, the blues uh, will go around. It's actually just this Janna here will go around. She's doing her best to save that turret, but that will be the mid lane turn going down in the end. 
And unfortunately, uh, despite getting that kill, they were not able to defend that objective, and Redside is still looking to rotate around and take this dragon here. Vi is in the vicinity. Uh, both sides have their smites available, or Nautilus would have shortly here. Uh, but it looks like they are going to be forced away. Ooh, that through the black shield uh, damage from this Nidalee, putting quite a bit of damage onto that. Um, we're gonna, it looks like they're actually going to uh, try and take this dragon now uh, with Vi in tow here. They will see this, but only Morgana and LeBlanc actually going to put in a lot of damage onto that Caitlyn. Caitlyn has to be very close to not get blown, or very careful to not get blown up now, and she will run away. And LeBlanc actually going to end up tanking that ultimate from Caitlyn, so she will go down to the Vi um, as... Uh, the ultimate from Kale is burned onto herself, and that's a great Oriana ultimate onto the three remaining threats of the red side. Going to be forced away, so that will be the dragon and a kill onto the LeBlanc for this blue side team. We're going to even hang around to take the crab. Great play there. Fantastic synergy from this blue team. And that will uh, even up the game quite a bit with that uh, sort of unseen power. Uh, of the dragon, uh, the first dragon of the game going over to the blue side. Uh, the game should be fairly even here despite uh, just a 1,000 gold advantage almost going over from that extra kill onto the red side. So we're going to largely see uh, the rest of these engagements just based out of uh, whoever can get some good uh, picks first. There is, uh, of course, one more turret going over to the red side here to give a little bit more pressure uh, as Nilly is just going to tank that up like a boss. No, actually, she's not even going to get the turn. And that will be Kale with the speed boost from her heal. Going to be able to get her. Not quite. No, the Nidalee Pound's going to be too much. She will flash for it, though. And Kale will get that kill secured with the flash. So another kill going over to the red side. The actual first kill for the Kale. So definitely a needed kill there. And Vi looking to catch somebody out, but not going to see anybody with that ward. So she will just take those Raptors. Or razor beaks, or whatever they're called nowadays. <laughs> uh, has some vision wars doing too. Oh, LeBlanc actually not going to be able to make it over the wall, and the chain will get walked away from by the Vi. Possible pick chance there with this many red players around. Um, unfortunately, not going to be able to make it. And with the attack speed, uh, Kale is going to be able to take down that top lane turret. So now three to one in turrets uh, over to this red side. Definitely doing a lot. Uh, more control with these objectives uh, of these objectives I should say with the kills that they have than the blue side is Caitlyn looking to start off this fight with an ultimate but it is going to be blocked by the Nautilus as Kale or as Vi gets zoned out and she will go down to the ignite in the end that will be the kill onto uh, LeBlanc taking down that Vi with the last tick of her ignite Kale wrapping around, looking, thinking about engaging, or joining the mid uh, to try and start an engagement there, but actually just going to continue to push down uh, this top lane, and if Kale gets left alone, those empowered auto attacks will destroy that turret. Uh, it looks like the wave clear mid is going to be enough, and Nidalee is going to be able to clear out that top lane uh, to prevent any further objectives going down, but we got to keep in mind if uh, LeBlanc does continue to get these kills, uh, she is going to become such a huge threat that uh, without a absolute vision coverage uh, this blue team is going to start to be afraid to go anywhere on the map and uh, as we see three sweepers already out and constantly being used uh, for this red team they are taking very good control of this vision as they uh, of course lay down some deep rewards here in the blue side jungle uh, for this blue team here Looking to try and get some of that vision back, clearing out this pink ward is the blue team. But they're actually going to be chased away. Vi taking a little bit of damage, not too much though. Graves actually throwing out the ultimate early here. Uh, looking to hopefully get an engage that uh, Q from Organa just out of range, unfortunately. Not able to land on anyone to catch anybody out there. And that will be the mark on to Kale, but it looks like Vi wants to start this off. Charging the Vault Breaker, but she's going to be queued by... Uh, the Morgana, we did see uh, Oriana instantly put the ball onto Vi as soon as she started charging that up, so very wise decision 
to back away from that with the uh, spot on Morgana Q there. Very good disengage uh, from a team that actually does not have too much disengage. So if they continue to use uh, what uh, is normally just considered their pick potential uh, for very uh, tactical strategic disengage like that, we're actually going to be able to see uh, quite a lot of engagements go in the red side's favor here. Uh, because that is probably one of their weakest points. The hard engage of the blue side is going to be hard to deal with. But if they can continue to do so in that way, this game will probably go in their favor. And it looks like red side really wants to take this bottom turret. But Caitlyn actually has quite a bit of uh, wave clear with that Q damage. So she's going to be able to clear that out just fine. Actually getting a second critical cloak here. Uh, after finishing the infinity edge. So I'm... Um, Interested to see what she's building with that. As we do look at the items, we see again uh, Graves going a little bit greedy here, actually getting the Avarice next um, to try and get as much gold generation as he can before he converts that into a static ship. And Kale gonna be chasing this Nidalee again. Nidalee does get the turret this time, but it might cost her life again. Kale doesn't have the flash up this time, but she doesn't need it. The Q just in range before the final pounce from the Nidalee, who even used the flash to try and get out of there, but it was not enough. So that will be another kill onto this Kale, who's gonna start to bring a lot of damage into these fights with that needlessly large rod completed. Or, uh, in addition, <laughs> to the completed Nasher's Tooth here. Gonna start to be able to wail on people uh, with that E that should have uh, enough levels in it to be essentially turned on the entire time here. As this dragon is up and we do see the red side starting it, uh, LeBlanc looking to create a little bit of pressure in this mid lane to try and force a decision here from the blue side who are looking to just try and attempt to steal. LeBlanc actually gonna try and uh, distract her and they will she will distract her enough to get that dragon um, but will be falling no blocked by the uh, <laughs> the face of that kale is the ultimate and graves gonna pick up the Caitlyn after her flash and the heal uh, with an ultimate from himself and also the Janna falling uh, but graves actually picked off by the Nidalee good uh, sense of Nidalee to hang around here and try and pick off that low graves was not able to pick off the uh, Lola Blanc as well, but a good uh, kill there to try and get something out of that exchange. Unfortunately, this mid turret uh, is not going to be able to be defended uh, by just this Oriano, especially with Nautilus able to tank up those turret shots. As LeBlanc gets a little bit more farm here before going back, trying to clear out the last of these minions, uh, which she will be able to do just fine. Um, probably clear out that pink ward on her way here before going back. Uh, probably to complete that DFG here and even get another uh, large uh, chunk of uh, ability power brought in in addition to that DFG completion here once she goes back. So that will be the DFG and um, actually looks like she's going to wait for, yes, that will be a blasting one. Uh, so LeBlanc has all the tools she needs now to pretty much assassinate anybody at this point. Um, Oriana with her shield up might be the only one able to survive uh, as this team has largely gone for the damage uh, even with that Nidalee here going mostly damage uh, if not all, I suppose all damage at this point uh, as the Sheen's not really not all damage um, looking to get that Lich Bane uh, completed next as this red comes up uh, red side is just going to rotate down here to defend this uh, bottom turret which actually was taking quite a bit of damage the minions trying to be heroes uh, but they are going to be cleaned up by this rotation into the bottom lane to protect that turret and LeBlanc looking to try and get any pick she can here uh, good sense to think there were people around uh, there but unfortunately there were multiple people around there so LeBlanc not able to uh, get a safe pick onto any one person but she will continue to have uh, looks like that around uh, the this uh, jungle area because uh, just a little peek here a little peek there can't hurt in the shield good shield on Divi there uh, and they will force that LeBlanc away now that is a very short uh, ultimate but with that down that will be enough with the ultimate no the ultimate actually going to be blocked and a great Oriana ultimate though onto the two squishies there 
and that will actually be everybody perfectly disengaging from this red side. No, that will be the Morgana going down, but that will only be the Morgana going down. So one for three during that fight, they're very good uh, uh, sense from the red team to back off as they got low, uh, kite away as much as they could, and end up playing that fight very well for a uh, pickup of a bot lane turret as uh, after those kills. So again, throw down some deep vision here, actually even take away the red buff, put that onto graves I suspect here, yeah that will be going onto the graves. And we start to see that this game is hitting that point uh, where it might be lost here um, if there's not a key engagement. We do see a lot of really good ultimates coming out of that Orianna. Um, just unfortunately the Vi uh, keeps getting black shielded with her ultimate. It does take some travel time uh, before she can get their great um, ward clearing dirty duty here uh, from this Janna. Clearing out a lot of that vision of the red side. Um, jungle there from the red team so hopefully if they can get some vision control back here uh, and avoid uh, that LeBlanc which is the majority of their kills despite um, certainly Kale not <laughs> being somebody pretty scary uh, Morgana with that uh, zone is completed also being pretty scary um, if they can get through that uh, uh, threat of the LeBlanc just assassinating somebody uh, we might be able to see a swing here. I am a little bit surprised um, that that locket was not rushed a little bit harder here. It uh, looks like it is actually going to be picked up by this Janna, um, who is fairly uh, rushing it, I do suppose, but i um, going to finish those boots first. going to put that a little bit behind um, compared to if she had just outright rushed it uh, to try and deal with all this AoE magic damage. Um, from the uh, LeBlanc, from the uh, Kale here. That spear from the Nidalee chunking out the Graves for half his health, actually more than half his health, so uh, a lot of damage there. Definitely going to need those Kale heals uh, if he wants to hang around and try and siege this turret. Some really good shots from the Nidalee, taking even the uh, Kale down quite a bit. Nidalee out for blood, trying to get as many of those spears down as possible. And that will be some good disengage here from this red team. Again, really good at disengaging, uh, despite that not being their strong suit for these champions. If they can continue to get these uh, key disengagements when they need them. Oh, LeBlanc actually not going to be able to pick up the kill on that Nidalee with the heal and the shield from the uh, Orianna here. Well, LeBlanc almost blowing her up. Did even burn this uh, DFG on that, so nearly just a little bit too tanky for her um, with that natural uh, sustain of the heal and of that Orianna shield. Though that will be, yes, Janna going down despite her attempt to ultimate uh, the LeBlanc away, try, probably trying to get a little bit of healing done on herself to survive the final Q. Actually not going to be enough, and that will be another kill going on uh, to the LeBlanc as the red side picks up a dragon, so that will be two dragons over to this red team here with only one on the blue team. So uh, we we do have not a shutout from dragons of dragons yet from this uh, red team. So blue definitely does still have some potential here if they can start to uh, get some really favorable team fights uh, to come back here. The gold lead is not that large. Um, it's only, well, I mean, you know, given the circumstances, this gold lead is actually not that large. Um, it is only uh, about 6,000 gold, 6,500 gold right now. Uh, so we do see uh, that Nidalee is going to be able to make it out with the B there in time. We're going to try and find her, but she is already gone, unfortunately, for this red team. Good sense by the Nidalee there to back out when she can. It looks like LeBlanc's trying, trying to get somebody here. Uh, but not going to be able to, unfortunately. Uh, just going to take that uh, minion wave there and keep that pressure up in the mid lane as she hangs around there in the bottom lane with that Kale uh, to try and catch out this Caitlyn, which it looks like she will be able to get the chains. No, Caitlyn going to E away. Back to her turret there. Uh, as they rotate around to this middle lane, they will be collapsed on if they're not careful. This could be an engagement the blue side is looking for with that Vi ultimate. They do not know the Vi is coming, and Vi gonna have to 
use that ultimate here before she goes down. She will actually get it on the correct one too. The invulnerable from the Kale gonna save her though. And LeBlanc will actually get the kill on Divide herself as Janet goes down. And that will be the Nidalee going down as well. Eventually. No, Nidalee actually gonna be able to pounce away through the jungle here. Despite the Kale flash. Um, but very critical flat, or ultimate there from Kale to save that LeBlanc, making that a two for one in the end, what should have been a two for two, uh, especially if that damage hadn't been wasted over killing LeBlanc as much as uh, it did. And that will be another red buff being taken away by this red team. Such strong objective control um, of this uh, critical buffs from the blue side jungle going over to this red team uh, very subtly but actually creating quite a difference not just uh, in having the buffs for these team fights but also sucking that experience away from this blue side team to give a level discrepancy here as we're going forward we do see uh, LeBlanc looking like a nightmare now with that extra uh, needless uh, completed here in addition to the void staff going to be able to blow up and eat through a lot of that uh, MR that will be brought by the Aegis that is now completed uh, on this Janna. But not a lot of MR aside from that, uh, except of course on the Vi, who will definitely need it as she keeps uh, going into these team fights here. She will be the most likely to get blown up, and that uh, was in an, uh, a Phantom Dancer here, finished for the Caitlyn uh, to try and synergize with those new ratios on the Infinity Edge. As they look to set up for Baron here, probably just getting that crab down. Um, not going to risk doing it early, but the blue side is a little bit afraid to check that. They will throw down a ward and see that they are not doing it um, as they see him in the top lane as well. Uh, clearing out those minions. Definitely want to get the uh, top lane and mid lane pushed before they set up for the Baron here. Uh, blue side has done a very good job in controlling the vision in this part of the jungle, though only that one ward from the red side. Uh, and this other one going down uh, within range of a pink so they will know it is there uh, even though the pink is cleared out and will be both the pinks going down now and the just as I say the vision uh, domination has swept out that Caitlyn will chunk it out half of LeBlanc's uh, life points there luckily the Kale heals around to get her back up a little bit but goodness gracious that uh, uh, chance to blow people up is uh, now a very str uh, large risk to this uh, LeBlanc here as she might die herself and that will be her going down taking that risk a little bit too uh, flippantly here when she did not have total vision of that area and it looks like that is going to be the team fight another three person ultimate from the Orianna great ultimates from the Orion Vi locking down uh, this Graves as long as she can in the turret shots putting in a lot of work here that will be Caitlyn cleaning up and Graves going down that will be five, uh, five five people for nothing that is the team fight they needed absolutely for this blue team and it will result in this baron vibe pretty low so she's gonna have to be careful but with her smite up this will be an easy baron for them that was absolutely the team fight they needed and with those Oriana ultimates if they continue to be so on point as they have been thus far in the game Oriana is definitely one of those game changers and she can continue to land those and create those team fights that despite the lead will go in blue side's favor here and with that we do see that gold lead all of a sudden sh nearly evaporating only down to 2000 gold here and with that baron buff onto the blue side uh, they will definitely be able to survive any siege that comes out from this red side as they try and if they continue to try and follow that game plan they were earlier of uh, sieging up while LeBlanc goes around and trying to get any picks. Uh, as she's doing right here, she might actually get this pick on a Janna. Janna going to lock it herself. Uh, and that will be enough to save her as this Vi comes in. Going to force the LeBlanc away. This uh, uh, Morgana looking for a uh, pick there uh, as this dragon is started here. And the teleport coming in from the Kale. So that will be everyone here, aside from the LeBlanc, who's going to be here shortly. Uh, but that will be 5v4 for a moment here, as the dragon resets, putting in a lot of damage on this red team for nothing. Uh, Caitlyn's got to be careful stepping that far forward, though. 
with this team. They will be able to get it. Yes, the Vi does smite it away. And that will be the Dragon going over. The Vi does die immediately. Another three persons shockwave from this Oriana. And they're all so low that this might actually... No, that damage is going to be enough from the red side team. Despite all three of those champions being so low, the damage uh, is going to be enough to bring them down and make that a four for one. But the Dragon did go over to the blue team here. So we are now two for two in Dragons. But it looks like, despite Oriana being able to give uh, this uh, Baron buff to the minions that are spawning, uh, with this uh, little bit of a wave here, that will be enough for the Graves to wail away at this turret, and these Baron up minions will not get here soon enough to save this turret. LeBlanc just jumping forward once, going to scare that uh, Oriana away, the respect there, uh, for the damage that she can bring. Perhaps a little bit too much respect, but... Uh, with those three champions there, she probably wouldn't have been able to uh, defend this turret regardless. So unfortunately that will be, or this inhib, uh, so that will be the inhibitor in the mid lane going down. And with that, the red side uh, has cracked this base, but uh, again, the Orianna has been very on point. Oh, and Morgana might actually get picked out here with Vi coming in if she is able to get that ultimate on her. No, Vi actually going to choose not to. Uh, looking at the vision really quickly, as they did see, it was completely dark here. Um, so only the Graves was around, but Vi not going to risk it uh, going in on the ultimate uh, just for that. Because, you know, if she does and she dies with that base in cr already cracked with the inhibitor down, uh, that might be it. Uh, the next time uh, there's a critical team fight and the uh, red side lands an ace, they, they might just be able to push up this mid lane and take the Nexus, so they gotta definitely be careful. I'm actually putting this Kaylin in the bottom lane here to try and split push and just finish off that turret, get that global gold out. LeBlanc putting quite a bit of damage onto that Oriana. <laughs> Finally, uh, the red team really starting to, oh, LeBlanc actually jumping into that uh, spear from the Nidalee. Uh, but it looks like the red side team is recognizing how uh, strong these Oriana ultimates have been as Kale pushes up in this top lane, might actually be able to get this <laughs> she might be able to blow on this turret. Uh, no, I'm actually going to recall instead as uh, the Blues team does rotate around to protect it here. But yeah, a lot of those turrets going down. It is starting to even up 3-6 to six despite the inhibitor being down mid and uh, that ward being down for a teleport if they do want a sneaky back door here. Uh, but it looks like it might expire uh, before this uh, teleport comes off cooldown here. for the Kale. And Janna really just trying to establish vision control again, but with the LeBlanc being the one who's in there, it's so hard to establish that vision control when at any moment you could get 100 zeroed from a LeBlanc. So, uh, looks like they, LeBlanc again, trying to see if she can find a pick here. A lot of MR is onto that Vi, so she should have some survivability, but that will be her going down. No, actually going to jump back. Good use of the pads there. I actually even got faked out a little bit there. Um, despite getting taken so low by the Caitlyn ultimate there, uh, LeBlanc doing what she needs to do at this point and just find that person, even if it's the support again and again and again. It does not matter. As long as it, she can set up uh, 4v5 team fights. that's all this LeBlanc needs to do. Uh, and there's the pop uh, of the speed boost. And it looks like they are going to be able to catch out this Nidalee. Vi actually probably should just leave this Nidalee to die here. And she does. Going to be able to back away herself. Um, as uh, the Kale is pushed away, so that will not be a successful split push. But another kill going over to the red team here. And we do see those death timers hitting quite large right now. 60 seconds uh, after that Nidalee was initially killed for that respawn. And the Spooky Ghost actually not going to make it uh, to their targets, despite their best efforts here. Um, but we do see both objectives here of the Baron and the Dragon coming up in just over a minute. So Blue Side is going to be forced out of their base here momentarily. And if Red Side can continue to get those picks uh, and make this a 4v5 situation, there's no way they're going to be able to survive this. Uh, Kaylin continuing to just old LeBlanc as frequently as she can to try and keep her down, uh, make her think twice about ulting in or uh, jumping into these team fights. 
which has been LeBlanc's uh, only downfall thus far. She keeps uh, jumping in, not keeps, but she has <laughs> jumped in a couple of times when she was a little bit too low to do so. So Caitlyn very wisely trying to keep her in that position, trying to recreate the circumstances where those mistakes have occurred. And uh, this inhibitor is slowly but surely starting to come back here in the mid lane, but these super minions are putting in work, and Kale is going to come in to try and continue to push these out. Uh, so that will be a setup here for a really strong siege uh, if the blue side isn't careful. Nearly going to be able to clear that out, but uh, looking to get this pick. No, the uh, uh, Banshee's Veil is going to actually save Caitlyn's life there. Very good pick up there, given how fed this little Blanc is. And Graves going to be ultimate, uh, throwing down the ultimate there, just to try and get the damage there. But the heal from Nidalee doing too much at this point. Vi is a little deep here, though. Going to have to just back away with her own Q. Uh, but with all those shields on device, she's actually going to be able to make it out just fine. It did cost uh, the Jan ultimate, though, which is a very key ultimate here. Um, so that might be this uh, next dragon going over to the red side. Yeah, it looks like the blue side's not even going to contest this. They're just going to have to try and stay here mid and defend this inhibitor that did just respawn here. But that will be the third dragon for red side. Uh, so now with that movement speed, uh, they're definitely going to be able to uh, have that LeBlanc be even more lethal as she roams around looking for those picks. Um, and as Nautilus and Morgana try and find those uh, good engagements to get a favorable start for the team fight. But actually seeing that, it looks like this blue side might try and sneak a Baron here uh, to try and get this uh, answered and get this objective off the map here. Uh, so that siege potential isn't there for the red side. No, it looks like they are just going to completely disperse here. Nearly trying to split as hard as she can, but the Kale is going to be here. And now with that Rudon's Hurricane done, she's going to easily be able to clear out this wave. Gobble up all that delicious farm in the top lane there. And there has been a lot of good ward placement done around this uh, Baron, so if there is a fight over it, uh, they will know where it's at, uh, especially with this crab ward that cannot be removed. So, a uh, little slow to react there is the Nidalee uh, to the LeBlanc jumping in uh, to try and kill off that Vi. Probably could have put a little bit more damage in, but uh, the LeBlanc going to be forced away regardless. And this could be a team fight here with LeBlanc jumping and getting that on two people. The locket not going to shield too much damage aside from the passive of that. No, Morgana going to force the flash. Janna actually going to be able to make it away with the heal. They will be taking down that Morgana, though Vi did die in the uh, meantime, keeping them back here uh, with the second uh, jump that will be uh, LeBlanc able to get this kill here. Going to send her clone and tank those turrets. Um, so overall... A 3 for 1 there. Unfortunately, the Vi running destruction in the back line. Uh, Going to be able to set up Morgana, but that will not be uh, the most critical of targets here as she is the support this game. And it looks like Red Side is actually just going to try and siege us down. Oriana does take the Graves quite low, but not looking like they're going to be able to hold this. They got to just try and go all in to stop this, but Graves with the GA, even if they could pick off all these people magically right now. Probably would it be able to respawn and have taken that Nexus by himself. So that will be the game going over to the red side. Uh, very scrappy game though. Those Oriana ultimates definitely a very star player in the end. She did go 6-2-6. Six, six. So Oriana multiple times almost swinging this game completely the opposite direction. Uh, in favor of the blue side here. But unfortunately that will not be the case. It will be... The win going over to the red team. I'm looking uh, at the breakdown here where you see, uh, again, Oriana with those ultimates, not just uh, landing them, but also creating a lot of damage uh, with that high kill participation. Only one kill she wasn't involved in with for her team throughout the entire game. So very strong showing there. But, of course, the story of the game is that LeBlanc who went absolutely insane um, and did not sacrifice much CS to do it. Um, had a, a lot of gold in the game despite how much she was roaming out there and was able to create those picks to always put the red team in fights where they had four people, you know, and when you're 4v5, there's just not much you can do. And, uh, of course, let's not forget about 
that Kale, who was absolutely putting in work uh, involved with a lot of those team fights there, putting out a lot of damage. She hit that point in the game where she did have that root on Hurricane so that uh, magic damage from her E was being distributed AOE all over them. Uh, in those final team fights in the Graves, of course, 6, 2, and 12, wailing away, looking at the damages here. Uh, we just see overall outperformed uh, uh, more consistently uh, was the blue side here. Um, the LeBlanc, actually, I, you know, I take that back. It looks like they were, the blue side was actually far more consistent with their damage output uh, than the red side, but <laughs> that... Giant LeBlanc number in the end is just going to be too much to overcome. So, unfortunately, that will uh, not be something that uh, this blue team is able to overcome. So, Epic DOS will be losing that game, and that will be Planter Technologies Prime picking up the win there. So, great game. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to stay uh, caught up with all the games uh, as After Hours Gaming League season does continue, go to their website. All the uh, matches will be listed in a schedule there. All the uploads will be posted there. And if you enjoy my commentary in particular, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, as I will be posting all these games as soon as I cast them uh, up to this account. Uh, so, I thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.